Corporation cares about all living things. Here on the edge of the Pacific, some 50 miles north of Los Angeles, is the U.S. Navy base at Point Magoo, a major center for the Navy's space studies and missile experiments. It is also the location of one of the most fascinating experiments the Navy has ever launched, a program of studying dolphins. Inviting you here at Point Magoo to see some of the progress made thus far in the extraordinary dolphin research program being conducted here under the direction of the Commander, Naval Ordnance Test Station, China Lake, California, in cooperation with the Commander, Naval Missile Center at Point Magoo. See, that was a dolphin. Or if you prefer, you can call him a porpoise. <laughs> now, dolphins have been living in the sea for 60 million years. But they are air-breathing, warm-blooded mammals, not fish. In fact, they're whales. The runts of the family is dwarfed by their mammoth cousins of the chihuahuas to a great dame. Doctor? Well, now, if you're wondering why the Navy is so interested in dolphins, the reason is quite simple. The dolphin is an expert on sonar, high-speed water travel, underwater communications, and maybe a number of things that the, the Navy is quite interested in. Here in these pools and lagoons, and at other locations, an effort has been launched under the direction of Dr. William McLean, director of the program, to better understand the capabilities of the dolphin. The animals being studied are kept in comfortable living conditions, and the facility is equipped to meet all the test conditions the scientists need for their experiments. At times, as many as a dozen dolphins will be kept here, active in some part of the research program. Weighing in at regular intervals is part of the strict dietary supervision and physical checkups for these denizens of the briny deep. This trim, white-sided Pacific porpoise tips the scale at slightly over 200 pounds, stripped these creatures can do many things extremely well. Until recent times, man was not successful in keeping dolphins in captivity and studying them. Now we can. As we use the sea more and more and penetrate deeper into its depths, we become more conscious and perhaps envious of the dolphin's ability and skill. We know there is much we can learn from the dolphin that will be of great help. We may be able to train this animal to assist us in various ways in the sea, and by studying him, we may learn things that will help us improve some of our Navy equipment. The Navy needs a sonar, or some kind of detection system, that works well at both short and long ranges, and will supply us with more detailed information about our undersea surroundings. We are intrigued with the dolphin sonar, because at short range he apparently visualizes his watery surroundings with his sonar system as accurately as we see things with our eyes. In fact, while no conclusive proof has yet been obtained, scientists believe the dolphin can see better with sonar than he can with his eyes. In preparation for tests to measure his sonar's effectiveness, this dolphin, named Tough Guy, is being trained to swim through a series of hoops. His trainer tests an acoustic buzzer, which will be placed underwater to signal the dolphin to start his run. Quick as a flash, he is off and speeding through the hoops with unerring accuracy. His trainer rewards Tough Guy for making a good run. Dolphins eat about 15 to 20 pounds of fish daily. Tough Guy is also taught to retrieve this weighted disc from the bottom of the pool. 
He pounces upon it and returns it with his usual self-assurance. Tough guy is blindfolded with a set of plastic eye covers to find out if, with his sonar alone, he can navigate through the series of hooks. Before joining the Navy, Tough Guy was an acrobatics performer at an amusement park and earned his living the hard way. After hesitating for a moment to find his bearings, Tough Guy shows that he can navigate through the hoops just as easily blindfolded as with his eyes open. Can Tough Guy, with his eyes covered, recover this weighted disc from the bottom of the pool? Well, let's find out. Look at that. As simple as the flick of the tail for this Houdini of the beast. A convincing demonstration that the dolphin can tell exactly where he is going without seeing with his eyes. We know the dolphin has at least two separate areas where he can produce sounds, and that he doesn't have to open his mouth to make sounds from either area. The sounds on the upper graph are being caught by a microphone above water. Those shown on the lower graph are being picked up by an underwater hydrophone. This chart visually recorded the sounds made above and underwater by the dolphin. The dolphin makes many kinds of sounds, such as barks, squeals, and yelps. But the two main sounds he makes are whistles and his rasping, creaking door sonar sound. To learn more about the dolphin's sonar, we need to know his hearing sensitivity at different frequencies. This dolphin, named Salty, is taking part in an experiment to accurately measure a dolphin's hearing sensitivity. As you probably know, the human hearing range is between roughly 20 and 20,000 cycles per second. We believe the dolphin is able to hear frequencies well above 100,000 cycles per second. These speakers being placed in the water by Dr. Johnson are used to transmit sound signals to Salty. When Salty performs the experiment properly, he is rewarded with a fish from this electronically controlled feeder. the electronic equipment is turned on and the experiment is ready to start. To check Salty's hearing sensitivity, the dolphin has been trained to touch this lever when, and only when, he hears a tone in the water. If he responds correctly, he hears another signal giving him the good news, and then he receives a small fish from the automatic feeder. Salty is only permitted a few seconds after the tone is sounded to respond. If Salty pushes the lever at the wrong time, he hears a different signal, which indicates to him that he has erred, and he is punished by having to wait a few minutes before the next tone is sounded in the pool. Right and wrong responses are automatically recorded on counters inside the trailer. By varying the frequency and intensity of the tones sounded in the tank, and recording Salty's correct and incorrect responses, the scientist can determine how well the dolphin can hear at various frequencies. The Navy is using some of its most sophisticated high-frequency sonar equipment at Point Magoo to record dolphin sounds. Many thousands of feet of taped dolphin noises are stored in this sound library, and new recordings are being added daily. Listen to this exchange between Doris, a bottle-nosed female in one tank, and Dash, a bottle-nosed male in the other. These two tanks are connected with hydrophones and speakers. The scientists have been keeping records on whether the male or female dolphin talks more. As expected, their reports show that the female Doris is by far the gabbiest. 
Dr. D.W. Bateau, has a device that translates a portion of human speech into whistle-like dolphin sounds. Dr. Bateau has also designed another machine that translates the dolphin's high whistles to voice-like sounds. With Dr. Bateau's devices, the scientists here hope to be able to better distinguish between the sounds the animals make and to put human sound signals in a form the dolphin is more familiar with. E, 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 In this test, with a white-sided dolphin named Naughty, elementary techniques of teaching ball. were employed. Ball. Get the ball. The hat. The hat. The objects were identified vocally, then tossed into the pool. The instructor then asked the dolphin to retrieve one of them. Get the ball. Objects of different shape, size, and texture. A ball, a hat, a ring, and a stick were used in this test. Hat. The hat. Get the hat. Like a child first learning, Naughty had periods of high and lower reliability. The hat. The hat. Get the hat. but ended the test with passing marks. Although it appears that Naughty was responding solely to voice instructions, there is the possibility that the dolphin was cheating by observing the reaction of her trainers, unintentional hand or eye signals or other cues. More rigidly controlled tests are now being conducted. The stick, the stick. The dolphin can go over the crossbar with the flawless style of an Olympic champion and is capable of jumping straight up as high as 20 feet or more. But there may be nothing extraordinary about this, Navy scientists say, considering the dolphin's muscular tail and powerful flukes. The dolphin uses both body and tail movement to propel himself through the water. This combination of movements is a very efficient thrust producer. In an attempt to scientifically measure how fast the dolphin can swim, tests were conducted with Naughty in a 300-foot tank at General Dynamics Convair Division in San Diego. Cameras and instruments measure from all angles the body movements of the dolphin while swimming. These tests did not show Naughty to be exceptionally fast. However, conditions in the tank may have discouraged Naughty from cutting loose on all burners. Navy scientists expect to try these speed tests again in the dolphin's natural environment, the open sea. Researchers want to learn more about the dolphin's unusual physiology. How his body organs function? Does he drink seawater? And if he does, how does he get rid of the salt? For a dolphin's blood contains only a little more salt than human blood. The scientists working on this phase of the program also watch out for the health of the animals. Dolphins have between 80 and 90 teeth. And although friendly with humans, they have been known to ferociously attack and kill sharks by ramming them. The eye patch keeps out the bright sunlight. Although dolphins appear to have good vision, they seem to rely much more on their sonar than their eyes. One species of dolphin, found in India's Ganges River, is blind. The dolphin's blowhole is simply a nostril with a quick closing cover to keep out the water. When he's removed from the water, the dolphin's skin should be kept wet or it will crack and peel. Dolphins have no sweat glands and readily become overheated when out of water. Dolphins' lungs are relatively no larger than a human's. They replace more of the air in their lungs with each breath, get more oxygen from it, and store up more in their muscles. A dolphin's heart slows down as much as 50% when he's diving. These animals are very susceptible to some common human diseases. It's not unusual for a dolphin to die of pneumonia. The dolphin's body temperature is almost identical to ours. 
Normal is 98 degrees Fahrenheit. The doctor is pleased to find Dash in good health. All dolphins at Point Magoo get regular blood checks. Dash, no different from us, is not fond of this part of the examination. It now seems almost a certainty that man's best friend in the sea is destined for a guard dog and a seahorse roll. In preparation for this, some of the dolphins in this program are being taught to wear a special harness. With its intelligence and response to training, the dolphin is admirably equipped to perform many services in the sea that will be of great value to man. With its fine sonar, and ability to plunge to the depths. It could be trained to locate underwater objects, to guard harbors against enemy swimmers and submarines, and to assist in various kinds of underwater operations. The extent of the use of the dolphin will largely depend on how well we succeed in establishing a system of commands and responses. Buzz Buzz's harness is lined with foam rubber to prevent it chafing her skin. Final adjustments are made to the straps. so that he may follow the path of the dolphin more easily through the tanks. Her trainer attaches a small colored float to Buzz Buzz. We still don't know exactly how long the dolphin can stay submerged without breathing. Some think seven or eight minutes. Others think it may be as long as 15 minutes. Dolphins sometimes get trapped underwater and drown. For test purposes, this animal is being trained to hold its breath. Private living quarters are separated from the main training area of the tank by this curtain of iron rods. For several months, Buzz Buzz has been carefully trained to come to the trainer immediately when he sounds an underwater buzzer. She has now reached a stage of training where she always responds to the buzzer and gets a fish reward. appears to be very fond of her trainers.
This will be the first time that Buzz Buzz has been loose in the open sea since she was captured well over a year ago. As she moves slowly away, does she realize she is free? She must, for look at her speed up and swim away from shore. Trainer Bob Bailey sets up the homing signal that Buzz Buzz has been trained to return to when she hears it sounded underwater. Now comes the crucial test. Will the months of careful training pay off? Will Buzz Buzz return when called, or will she, now that she knows she's free, keep right on going? Maybe back to the Gulf of Mexico, where she came from. Bob Bailey presses the buzzer. Buzz Buzz heard it. She's hesitating. Is she undecided? She's coming back. Buzz Buzz has learned her signals well. She obviously has decided she likes it better here with her trainer companions, who always have a pocket full of fish. The scientists are still in the early stages of investigation of this complex creature. Among the many things they'd like to discover, for instance, is how the dolphin navigates accurately over vast stretches of open sea. The sea is the home of the dolphin. It is also the domain of the United States Navy. We know that the dolphin is friendly, good-natured, and cooperative, which makes it ideal for study purposes. As their dolphin research program moves ahead, the Navy hopes to find out much of value from its friendly aquatic neighbor. by the Latham Foundation for the promotion of humane education who knows that respect for Respect for animals, each other, other people, our country, other nations, will lead to world friendship. The preceding program is made available as a public service.